Hey, 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 fellow content creators. Are you tired of struggling to choose the right lens for your B-roll shots? It's frustrating, I know. When you have a vlogging lens like the 16 to 35 and you're not sure if it's good enough for those smooth cinematic B-roll shots. But fear not, my friends, I got you covered in this video. In this video, I put the 16 to 35 to test against a dedicated B-roll lens, the 50 millimeter 1.4, the G Master, the brand new G Master from Sony. And by the end of this video, you'll find out the answer to your question. Can you really get away with just using the vlogging lens for your B-roll? And if you watch till the end, I might just tell you what my secret lens is for B-roll. Let's get to it. What is happening, everybody? It's your boy, Sean Alami. We're in the beautiful city of Dusseldorf with the one and only Miss Alex. We had the pleasure of working together five years ago, I yes. think, when we were both shooting for Marriott. But today our purpose is to compare two lenses. The 50mm brand new 1.4 from Sony to the 35mm 2.8, also from Sony, which is being used uh, to film this scene right now. It's actually a 16 to 35, but we're going to compare them and see which one is the best lens for you to capture some B-roll. And in this beautiful city, there's tons of different corners with, with different beautiful architects, kind of modern fashion-y look. So we're going to go through them. And scene by scene, we're gonna swap lenses and see which one is the best one, and you be the judge, okay? Stay tuned. the comparison you probably have your own answers but for me I personally love the creamy bokeh in the background so in this case I'm gonna lean more towards the 50 millimeter lens for my b-rolls but let's take a closer look at these shots together and see which one performs better in each scenario all right so there's this shot that I absolutely love and it perfectly shows the power of using the right lens take a look at how the 50 millimeter lens creates a clear separation between the subject and the background making the background blurry in all the right places it is also worth mentioning that using the 1.4 lens allows two more stops of light hitting the sensor, which is especially very beneficial in low light situations. While we all know that the Sony a7S III can handle 2.8 in dark situations without an issue. But having those extra two stops just makes you feel prepared and confident while filming. But other than the bokeh and the extra light that comes into this lens, the Sony 50mm lens, the f1.2 or the f1.4, this just has this beautiful artistic look about it that I personally love. You know, I adore this look and that's why it's definitely a must have for me in my gear collection. Now let's look at another shot in 35 millimeter lens, okay? This is the lens I would use if I was telling a story and I wanted to show my character in a specific location. That's where I would use a 35 millimeter lens in most cases. Let's say your character here is Alex and she's waiting for a friend. In this case, it's very important for the viewer to see the location as well because it's part of the story. And we want to see just enough of the background to get a sense of the location, but still keep the focus on our character. But what if we're shooting a commercial and there's no story involved? That's where the 50 millimeter lens comes in handy. Let's say Alex is advertising for a clothing brand and we want to shoot this in slow motion. And in this case, we don't really care about what the location looks like. We just want to focus on Alex and what she's wearing. So using a more portrait style lens definitely makes sense here. Of course, there are times when portrait lenses are used in cinema as well. Usually when they're filming dialogue scenes, we want to focus on the character's faces and their expressions. I've even used the 50mm 1.2 from Sony, which creates an even more blurry background than the 1.4 to film some dialogue scenes. We can have a look right here. Now, even though there's no story involved, we still want to blur out the background so we can focus on the characters. Now, you might ask me, Sean, doesn't the location play a big part in the story too? Absolutely. That's why we always start the dialogue scenes with establishing shot, so the audience can recognize the location. To wrap this up, I believe 
that every content creator should have a lens like the 16 to 35. That was always my lens, my first lens to use. As this lens is a must have because it allows you to tell your story and capture those wide angle shots. If you have to, you can go from 16 to 35. But this doesn't mean that you cannot produce B-roll shots with it. As you saw earlier in the video, once we get a little bit closer to the object and we're on a 35 millimeter, we still get a blurry background and it somewhat gets the job done. But I'm telling you, if you want to take your B-roll game to a next level, you should definitely consider going for a little bit of longer lens, like the 50 millimeter lens or an 85 millimeter portrait lens. All right, now I want to tell you what my two favorite lenses are, okay? I know investing in lenses can get really pricey, especially if you're just starting out. But if you had to choose two lenses, I would definitely say go for the 16 to 35 for your first lens. And if you wanted to go for a second lens, go for the 70 to 200. Now this second option might cost you a bit more, but if you're on a budget, there are other options. Like the Tamron 780 2.8 for Sony shooters. That's a great alternative that won't break the bank. In conclusion, the question of whether the 16 to 35 can be your go-to for both vlogging and B-roll has been put to test. Through this comparison, we've learned that while the 16 to 35 is a versatile lens that can handle both types of shots, having a dedicated B-roll lens like the 50 millimeter lens can definitely take your footage into the next level. The 50 millimeters ability to create creamy bokeh and separation between subject and the background can definitely add an artistic touch to your shots. But I gotta say, ultimately, the choice of the lens depends on the specific need of your project, but having both lenses in your kit can definitely provide with the versatility and a creative freedom to achieve your desired results, all right? Remember, investing in quality lenses can definitely be expensive, I know, but it's definitely a worthwhile investment for any content creator looking to elevate their craft. So as someone who's been working full-time on my YouTube channel for the past two years, I can honestly say I've never been happier as a content creator despite all the challenges that I've faced, okay? I've made a lot of mistakes in this path, and I wanna share those lessons with you in case you wanna embark on this path as a filmmaker. So if you're considering taking this path, I've created a dedicated video sharing the mistakes that I made in the first two years and some important points that will be definitely useful for you. Click the link right up here to go check it out. Until we see each other next time, Sean Alami.